Hello and welcome. We are the Sisters of the Holy Fiber. This is episode 18, I do believe, and my name is Devin, also known as Rambunctious Guy. And I'm Heather, known as Tiny Kiwi. So grab your knitting or crochet or whatever you're working on today and join us while we craft and chat. Hello, if this is your first time visiting, welcome to our show, and if you've been along before, welcome back. What are you working on this week? Oh, that, not very much, sadly. Okay. That uh, was the face you, of sad. You first! You first! Oh, Sorry. me first? Okay. Hot. Um, I have been not terribly exciting in this department, as I've just been working on my shawl. Here it is. It looks pretty much the same as last week, only slightly bigger. <laughs> I don't know. I think it looks significantly larger. Oh, okay. Well, I'm not even 25% of the weight on yet. When do you have to have 50%? Well, technically, I have to have 50% at the end of July, but I need to have 50% in the middle of July, or I'm not going to make it. Yeah. So, um... Well, 25%, that's like half of 50%. It's like half of the half. Yay! That's like getting there in percentages. All right, I'm yeah, trying. Yeah, I'm, I, you know, I'm trucking along. I, And I will get more work on it done when I am no longer working, you know, when school is out. Yeah. So. Um, but that's all I'm working on. That is literally the only thing I've knitted on. I don't even think I've worked on my blanket yet in the oh, okay. last week. I don't think I touched it in the last week, so... Yeah, it's been hot. Touching wool has been low on my priority. Um, so I haven't got much work done myself. Uh, let me show you my only progress. So this is the hat that I've been working on, which is sad because this is like super, super easy. Just a flat rectangle. And look at the little tiny smidgen of progress. It's so sad. I do one row and then I'm like, my hands are sweaty. Ew. And then I set it down. <laughs> So, yeah, once this one is done, I'm switching over to thread projects, I think, for the rest of the year. It's going to be a hot summer here, and I just don't think I want to be working with worsted right now. Mm-hmm. Unless the weather cools off again. It's been kind of yo-yoing here. So it perhaps. has been. Uh, yeah, so that's it. That's my only whip, and I have absolutely no FOs because I'm lame. We're just dedicated to our whips, is all. I don't have any of those either. No. <laughs> Moving right along. You've got a good reason, though, because the, the, your shawl is gigantic. Yes. So at least you've got something to show. I've just been lazy. It's really just at, been at 100% laziness. Nice. All right. Well, our next segment is what? Brainy moments? Uh, let me check. Yes, indeed it is. And I've been talking about this, trying to do the same brainy moment for like four weeks or something ridiculous. But today, today we're actually going to film it. So hopefully it'll actually get done. And to what are you referring for those who haven't been along for the ride before? Uh, I'm going to be doing a very simple how to tat uh, video. So hopefully, fingers crossed, this week it'll actually get done. I'm always big on the ideas and uh, never quite so much the um, making it happen. So we'll see. Well, I also promised a button tutorial, which is on my iPad. I just haven't loaded it to YouTube. So who's lazy now? <laughs> I'll stand uh, out of that. Maybe that'll get up, too, when we get this tatting one up. We're hoping. We'll, we'll get everything cranked out at some point, whether it's five years from now or five weeks from now. Who yeah. knows? If somebody sent me a RAV message was like, I was looking forward to that video. Where is it? Then I might, like, be a little bit more Yeah, motivated. pretty much. Yeah, but when when we have, like, Three people viewing or whatever. We're like, eh, whatever. Yeah, whatever. It gets done when it gets done. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Pretty much. Okay. So, moving right along to Shiny, which I'm actually waving around. Look. Ooh. What Tra Tracy got me. Um, a Slytherin colorish fan for um, the fair because it's hot there. It is hot. Yes. Although fair is now done. Sadly. But she got herself a Ravenclaw one because she's Ravenclaw. Hey. Uh, and I got my Slytherin one, so now I'm using that to keep myself cool because it is humid and not so great here. Yeah. yeah. Don't know why. It gets cold, it gets hot. I just wish it would make up its mind so I know, you know, what to wear. Yeah. 
pretty much every time I go outside, if I wear shorts, it's hot. Or not hot, but it's cold. And then vice versa. If I'm wearing pants, it's like sweltering. I just have really bad clothes planning, I think. I don't know what's going on with that. Anyway, do you have any shiny for this week? This is my only shiny. I don't have anything that's actually new to me, but I have started the second color on my shelf. So I thought I would show you that oh. as my shiny this week. Yay! I am excited. So I'll give you a little bit closer up. So this is the first color, mm -hmm. and this is the second one. They look so much alike, I can't even tell. Yes, don't they? But this one is slightly darker. I can believe it. And I can tell... I can tell. In real know. life, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. The one on your left hand is darker? Yes. Yes, correct. So, uh, and then I thought I would show you in the knitting where it is. I When you change color in a gradient yarn, what mm -hmm. they suggest doing is you do, uh, when you're going to change colors, you do two rounds of the new color, four rounds of the old, two of the new, two of the old, or something like that. I can't remember exactly mm -hmm. what it is. But, um, Just to switch it up. Blend it in. To kind of blend in the color transition, yeah. Mm. So, um, for example, you can see, like, when I first started changing the color, I don't know if you can see this right there. Mm -hmm. You can see that where I put the new color in, mm -hmm. it's a pretty stark change because the, the dark color came in right there. But then, like, farther down, it's a little bit harder to see. Like, where the color changes. It's, you, I mean, you can kind of tell to what it is, but... Mm -hmm. I don't know if you're going to... Can you see this? Um, not really, but, you know, how my video is on my end. It's usually pretty cruddy. Yeah, I don't, I don't really know if you can see it, but... Yeah. Uh, here it is, where the color is. So, okay. Anyway, um... It's fun knitting with the new color, and then the new color... Like, some of it is exactly the same color as the old... And some of it is, like, a little bit darker, so uh -huh. it's kind of interesting, yeah. Keeps the visual interest up, too, while you're knitting. Yeah, it is making it fun to knit. So yeah. even if I'm not, like, over the moon with the finished project, I am over the moon with, like, the process. I'm having a lot of fun making it, so. That's good. Yeah. How are you doing with the charts? How do you feel about them? Oh, like us? charts. I know, yeah. I know it's pretty chart-heavy. Yeah, um, so I've been keeping track on my iPad, and I left my iPad at work today. Oops. <laughs> but um, I do have a PDF version on my computer and on my phone, so I can, like, look it up if I really want to. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, um, like, four, four or five rows away from the part where it's, like, a little bit meshy, and uh, there's patterning on every row instead of just patterning on every other row so I'm like oh, I don't have brain power for this <laughs> so, <laughs> I pick up a stockinette project on the side for your I, I need that like brainless round where I'm just counting to make sure it's like seven stitches three seven stitches three six stitches three I made a mistake <laughs> uh. <laughs> you know like I can do that but <sighs> so um That'll be I interesting. And then she had to, like, make up some symbols. She's like, this swirly thing means make three. <laughs> okay. How funny. <laughs> Which is kind of funny because normally, you know, like, knit um, patterns. Like, you know, a, a line, dash line that way means you're knitting two together. And, right. like, going that way, it means slip, slip, knit, you know. And yarn over makes a hole, so it's a zero, right. you know. But this is, like, swirly. <laughs> <laughs> I ran out of symbols, so I had to make up some. Yay, charts. Pretty much. Uh, it's a 20-stitch repeat chart, too, so uh, the repeat doesn't take that long to get through. But after my debacle, where I had to rip mm -hmm. out five mm -hmm. um, that we don't mention, I have I have stitch markers in now to mark my, All good. Mark my things. But I don't like... Um, moving stitch markers. I don't like having stitch markers um, hanging here. Mm -hmm. So I usually just mark like, I just mark it and leave it somewhere. And these are actually getting a little bit far away from right. from where it is up here. So um, I have the my beginning of the round one moved up higher. So it's like, I don't know where the beginning of the round is anymore. 
Ah, uh, whatever. Close I enough. need to move that one up. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm now just babbling on. So, this is, what yeah. is next segment? I have no idea. This is going to be a very babbly episode. I don't have much to talk about today. Uh, hyperventilate. I have nothing. Oh, I have something. Uh, I was really excited to share with you. And I am really bad because it didn't write down the artist's names or anything. But there's a website that I, uh, one of the art teachers at my school showed me called Colossal. Mm -hmm. And all it is is this guy um, puts, uh, features things on the website every couple of days that he thinks are awesome. Well, today's featured thing was these paper craft uh, dioramas. Uh Uh, And they're these papers... um, scenes so all the scenes are all made out of paper cut pa- cut out paper and then they light them in such a way that you can that it looks like it's the light is coming from a certain direction and then they animated them so like there's this little story there's a couple of story things and i thought you'd like them i thought of you so link me yes so i will link you to that that sounds exciting cool. Uh, my F- Speaking of papercraft, before I forget, did you see the papercraft version of Howl's Castle? It's I think I did. Gigantic! I was like, "Oh my gosh!" I feel like I feel like pulling my hair out when I do little tiny birds this big. I can't imagine making that thing. Yes, that's crazy. Yes, Props to you, help. person who put that thing together. Yeah, and I also saw on this website, like, somebody made an origami life-size version of an elephant out of one piece of paper. It's life-size. So, you know, like, things like that are on this website. It's kind of cool. <laughs> that is pre- that is pretty cool. That sounds like something you and I would do, actually. Yay! I know, we're like, well, how large a piece of paper would we need if we wanted to finish it? <laughs> and where would we get some? Who would make such a paper for us? I know, exactly. Yeah. We're like, well, we tape butcher paper together. <laughs> Um, but the other thing I'm hyperventilating about, uh, hasn't actually happened yet. Terry, my partner, said that she would buy me, because I've never played Zelda, mm-hmm. and, uh, I can, you can buy it through the Wii, because all the old Nintendo games you can buy through the Wii. So she mm-hmm. said that once, um, my spring concert is coming up, it's tomorrow, so she said once it's done, then she's gonna buy it for me, and then I can brain out on Zelda. <laughs> that sounds super cool. Yeah, so I'm excited about that, but I'll let you know if that actually happens next week. Our baby, I don't know if you remember, but our babysitter's um, eldest son had that, that golden cartridge, and it was just the fanciest thing when I was a little kid. I just thought it was just the bee's knees. Oh, yeah. It was so exciting when I got to put it in and play it, you know, because it was somebody else's, so I had to ask, you know, and I was just so excited. I still remember that. Every time I see those golden cartridges, I, I get that same feeling. Like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I remember playing uh, Mario Brothers 2. And we mm. would rent that from the video store. So we yeah. didn't get to, you know, it wasn't one of the ones that we owned. So it was, I still remember it being like special to be able to play as the princess. Right. Yeah. That was pretty cool too. That was, fun. That was really fun being able to rent those games. Yeah. Our little local video store was fun. Yeah. Back when VHS and Betamax were still duking it out. <laughs> I remember that when you had to, like, choose which section to, of the store to go into. Because I, I would wander into the wrong one and then I would get a movie and me and Dad would be like, we don't, <laughs> we don't have a Betamax player. Be kind, rewind. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I found, I found that sticker on um, a VHS tape that we were withdrawing at the library when I was working there. So I popped it off the tape. So now I have a little sticker that says, Be kind, rewind! Because I just find it, like, hilarious. Because that's totally a reference that, like, no one will get unless you live yeah, in that. Yeah, I mean, I the kids, it. my kids at school would not know what we were talking about. Like, exactly. if I said, Be kind, rewind, they'd be like, what? I have no idea what you're talking about, crazy it's woman. It's such a product of, like, that time period of it VHS, really is. you know? It really is. So. Anyway, we're totally randoming. Oh, it's, it's uh, whatever. Ten the end of episode. Life-size elephants, random. Yeah, well, that's what I was hyperventilating about. Okay. Yay. Good. Yay. And that was our geeky talk, too. So yes. it was in the right segment. Betamax. <laughs> yeah. Um, books is next. I don't have anything. I, I haven't read anything. I haven't even read the book that I have out of the library. I haven't done yeah. anything. Well, you know, I never read the things I'm supposed to. 
But instead, so I thought I'd show off this one, which is thread crochets with these little tiny, let me try to get it in the middle, flowers. Cool. I don't know if you can see them. Yes, they're very pretty. They're so cute. Yeah. They are so tiny and so cute. Um, I'm not sure I would make a whole, like, necklace out of them. Mm -hmm. Here's another one. Hopefully this one will show up nicely because it's large. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's so um, cute. Yeah, it's full of really adorable patterns. So, I thought about making these as earrings, but that would take a while because it's a lot of color changes. Mm -hmm. Um... So this is probably what I'm going to be switching to soon, since the weather's just been so hot. Mm -hmm. um, you know, small projects like this, or doilies, or, you know, things that are cotton mm -hmm. or thin. This wool is just killing me. Mm -hmm. It's killing me, Larry. So, no, don't sue me. She's also got some uh, bead projects and stuff in here. Let me find one of them. Get a close-up of these beads. I don't know if I have the patience to work with beads and crochet. Mm-hmm. I know she had a bigger picture of this weird-looking little... I don't know. They look kind of remind me of, like, pomegranate seeds or something. Speaking of beads, did I tell you that... Um, oh, here you found it. Uh, I don't Lift know. It up. There, oh, cool. I'm trying to get it in the light. I can't the tell. The beads are in the middle, right? Yeah. Yeah, it looks like little fruit like petal cups, and like yeah. there's a little bead on the inside. That's really cute. Yeah, I mean, it looks kind of like a pain to to make. Oh, oh here, yeah. on the cover. Hello. Durr. Oh, neat. And there's a couple individual ones, but um, small mm -hmm. and fun. Mm -hmm. So I gotta go through and organize my um my thread weight stuff and see what I've got, you know. Mm -hmm. I know I have black and some very, very small white, but that's it. You and were that's not allowed stuff. to use black. I love you. I already did, remember? I don't know if you remember that oh, little... Do I ever. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, what were you going to say? I'm just kidding. I, I might not remember. I made a little, like, it's supposed to be a rose or something crocheted. Was it out of that book? I think it was, actually. Now that I think about it. Or maybe it wasn't having a brain fart. Maybe it was in a different thread crochet book. I have too many books, in case you didn't know that already. It must be in a different book. Anyway, I made a little hair clip thing with this little flower thing. It looked kind of like, ended up looking like a uh, feather more than a flower. Hmm. So I did a sort of photo montage of like, well, what is it kind of thing, you know? It's, you know, Daruma's eye patch. It's a booger. It's whatever, you know? <laughs> so uh, that's on my Ravelry page for that project. Oh, fun. That was a pretty fun turn in. So made it a little more exciting than just a, it's a hair clip, you know? Did you get some bonus points for it? I think I might have actually, yeah, and I totally I got a couple of compliments on the um, storytelling part of it, so that was nice. Even if I don't get extra points, it's nice to have your work, uh, you know, uh, appreciated. I guess. Mm -hmm. So that was fun. But that's uh, all I've got for books. But speaking of beads, while we're on beads, okay. did I tell you that I found a bead store? No. There's a bead store that's. Um, close enough to me. It's like an hour away. And they have beads that you could use for knitting. Oh. One of the reasons I haven't beaded with knitting is because I don't have a place that like has them that I can look at. Mm -hmm. And um, I am, you know, slightly crazy and thinking about beading the edge of this shawl. Mm -hmm. So if I make it to the, if I think I'm going to have enough time, mm -hmm. Then I might be the late, the edge, but um, I would have to I'm be gonna, moving faster along on this than I am now. And I'm just gonna say I'm gonna remind you of this when it gets to the end, and you're like pulling your hair out, and you're like, I'm never gonna get it done, and there's like tears of sorrow, and then I'm gonna remember, oh, remember you wanted to beat it, and then I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be that person. I'm gonna be a horrible person to you. <laughs> <laughs> and and wait, and like 
when I'm barely finishing it not beaded, you're going to make fun of me that I also wanted to beat it? Right. Okay, good. Yes. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> we're so we're so bad. Um, yeah. So I – and one of the other reasons I was not going to beat it at all and that it didn't get into my owl proposal is because I didn't have the beads, you know. Right. you got to have your supplies. So. Right. Anyway. <clears throat> But I am excited for future projects. And I was thinking, you know, like, maybe I should make my first beaded shawl not gigantic. Maybe. Maybe You're in Slytherin now, nothing to do but dream big. (laughs) Yeah, okay. That's a crazy amount of beading because that's a huge project. Yes. But I will be not working. So. That's true. Yeah. But it would still be, like, four hours of work every day. And you know what? I think what you really ought to do before you decide to do that mm-hmm. for sure is I hate to say it but make a swatch oh no yeah I would definitely swatch because what I would like if I was thinking about actually doing it mm-hmm. I would buy like different colors right you know and then I would swatch with the different colors and see which one right. I'm gonna like the best you know like I am not spending all that time and going I don't really like these beans you know like uh uh-uh. so <laughs> yeah I would definitely swatch okay good yeah just so that we're clear. I am cray cray, but I'm not that cray cray. Okay, good. Good to know. Good to know. God, this wool is hot. Ugh. Okay, now, next segment. Stop whining. I'm on the last row before I have to decrease, though, so I'm trying to trying to get through it. Next segment. Next segment. I have no idea. I spy. What have you spied? Um, dolphins. That was fun. I was going to say, is this a real thing that you spied, or, like, were you having a crazy moment? I know it's hard to tell sometimes, but I actually did see dolphins. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do you see dolphins? Hopefully living, swimming dolphins. Yeah, so they just live, there's um, several that live, I think there's several pods that live around here. Uh Uh-huh. So sometimes we go out and see them, and um, there's a couple that have some babies, with them right now, huh. and adorable. you can kind of tell where the dolphins are going to be, like where the pelicans are diving, and then so you just yeah. like watch where the pelicans are fishing, and then you can use, usually there's um, some well not usually but sometimes a dolphin pod will be following the fish too. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's been fun. That does sound exciting. That's like way more exciting than mockingbirds. <laughs> uh, and. My friend said that she saw a whale, but I did not see a whale. Oh. Oh, well. Next time. Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah, I wish I had something so exciting, but the only thing that I have to report is that the mockingbird by my house has now picked up as a, um, an agitated blue jay call, as well as his car alarm sounds. So, Mm -hmm. that's been exciting. (laughs) Oh. I keep joking to Chris that somebody needs to stop stealing the birds in the neighborhood and setting their alarms off, but he doesn't find them. Um, What else have I seen? I know I saw something else. But now I can't remember what it was. Oh, well, Phoebe. Oh, I like Phoebes. They're so adorable. I love their little peep sound. Oh, I do have something for this segment. Okay. Speaking of Phoebes, for some reason it reminded me. (laughs) Go for it. On Cute Overload, and if you don't know what Cute Overload is, be prepared to waste some of your hours on cuteness. Yes. Uh, It's a website where literally the people that run the website just post pictures of cute animals. And there's a video somebody took of um, a nest. So these songbirds built a nest. I think they're sparrows or something. Mm -hmm. Um like, in the eaves of his house, so he set up, like, cameras. It's, like, a half hour long. So you see them from their eggs, and then they hatch, and they get, grow older, and you see the mommy feeding them, and it's really oh, cute. Oh, that sounds adorable. Yes, it is adorable, except that the person who um, took the video touches the birds, which I Ooh. am not, you know, like, okay with. But right. <clears throat> if you don't want to see that, then I wouldn't do that, you know. I mean, yeah. he's being gentle and affectionate, but... You're not supposed to touch wild animals. So. Right. Uh, so that's our advice for the week. Don't touch wild animals. Yeah. Blam. Even if they're cute and fluffy, it's still a wild animal. 
Um, but also on that website, there is a video of, oh, I can't remember what it is, but it's taking a dust bath. And it is the cutest. It, is, it really is an overload of cute. It's like so excited to take its little dust bath. Chinchilla is taking yes, dust chinchilla. bath. It's a chinchilla <laughs> taking a dust bath. And they are like, they prepared like this little, it's, it's a wooden like boat with like dust in it <laughs> for the chinchilla to like take its dust bath. So cute. They are so adorable when they take their little dust bath. Holy moly. Oh and, my goodness. And gosh. seriously, like the camera can't even capture it twirling around. It's like, yeah. I know it's like little foofs of, of, of movement. I mean, they really are quick. Yes. So it was, that was also very cute. But anyway, um, the bird video was, it was neat to, I mean, I'd seen videos like that before when I was younger, you know, but it was neat to see it again. Mm -hmm. Just how, just that instinct that the birds have to, um, to take care of their young and to fly, to feed and to fly. And, you know, so it was cute. And chinchillas are nothing to sneeze at. They're adorable. Yes, so Cute Overload. If you haven't ever been on there, do yourself a favor. If you're having a bad day, go to cuteoverload.com. It's very good. And I would suggest, if you've never been there, save it for a bad day. Yeah. (laughs) And then go, because seriously, it will fix your bad day. (laughs) Yeah, it does. It totally does. It fixes my bad days. Yeah. I know, like, when I've had a bad day at work, I go on Cute Overload, and I'm like, how could I be sad? These little puppies are so adorable. Oh, <laughs> You're so adorable, little puppies. You made my day. True facts. Yeah. Anyway, so random me again. So anything else for I Spy? Uh, nope. Okay. Um, I haven't seen anything exciting other than the Phoebe, so. And he's pretty cute, though. I'm not going to lie. Um, what's next? Let me find my name. Uh, ear party. What do you got? I forgot about your party, so I don't have anything. <laughs> um, I'm actually really excited, which is kind of throwing in with hyperventilate. Um, but one of the, the bands that I like, well, I guess it's a duo, not a band, but whatever, um, just put out a new album. Mm-hmm. What's the name of it? White Women, I think. I was kind of like scratching my head about the title, but what ifs? Um, they're like electro funk kind of thing. I don't know. Um, what you'd call them. Chromeo. I don't know if you've heard of them. It's like Romeo, but with like chrome. Chromeo? Yeah. They're like this Canadian... Romeo, but chromey. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. They're, they're, they're awesome. Uh-huh. Uh, they use a lot of like old keyboards and synths and stuff. So they sound, they have sort of a very 80s kind of, you know, electro sound. Mm-hmm. Um, but I really like them. They, you know, the way that they, um, produce music or make it it just uh is more modern feeling than the 80s stuff so even though it sounds similar because they're using like similar kind of instruments and sounds Mm -hmm. it still has like a very modern uh feel to the music interesting so i'm excited to listen to their new album i've only listened to one song so far but um i gotta get that album i gotta get my hands on it because they don't make bad stuff you know and they're kind of playful and fun um, you know, they don't take themselves too seriously, mm-hmm. so. I'll, I'll see if I can find one of the songs and link to it. I know the one, there's one, I think they did a, one of the singles on their new album on David Letterman, so that should oh. be available on YouTube. Yeah, so I would, usually that. that, that's available on YouTube, so. Yeah, any of the live stuff usually is. Yeah. So I'll link to that. I'm very excited to listen to that album. I'm geeking out. Yay! Even- because they have a lot of really good songs. Cool. Definitely stuff to put on uh, while you're cleaning the house and dancing around with the mop or whatever. <laughs> Not that we do that. Not that I do. Okay, oh, yeah, I totally, we do. I totally do that. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. But that's all I got for this week. I've been listening to reggae and stuff, too, but I uh, don't have any names for that because I was just listening to a, um, uh, what do you call it, an internet station, so that was just playing. But I've been enjoying the reggae, too. Something Something different for the moment. Switching it up. Mm-hmm. Music to clean your house to. <laughs> I um thought I didn't have brainy or I'm all so tired. It's okay. Hang in there. After your concert, I thought it's I home. didn't have your party, but when you talked about cleaning, okay. I did clean this week and I brought out some old music that I hadn't listened to in a while. So, um, 
Are you finished with your part? I am indeed, and I'm just thinking that these instructions are not very good. I was just looking at that. Sorry. Yeah. I <sighs> put down my lace because I was like, that doesn't look right, so need more brain power. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, and I was talking with a friend about like, old music that we knew. I think she just burst out into song one day, and I was like, hey, I know that. So then we were just, like, singing things. Right. And um, I remembered Ani DeFranco and 32 Flavors. Oh, yeah. That was a really good one. 32 Flavors and then some. Yes. Yeah. Um, Because there's a line in that the song title is from, I am 32 Flavors and then some. Mm -hmm. Uh, (laughs) Uh, But I... Got out her album, Living in Clip, which is a live album. And she can be a little bit like angry girl music. But when I found her, I was angry. And uh, so right, (laughs) she struck a chord with me when I first first listened to her music. And uh, so it brings me back. But it's good cleaning music now. It's time for when we're not doing the podcast. We have to put the knitting down, I think. Think about it later. It's not that. It's just like it's said to end on the... And then I'm like, but then obviously I need to be ending on... So that I have a knit row coming. I don't know. What's next? After your party. Walks in the urban wilderness? Walks. Walks in the urban wilderness. What you got? Nothing. I think I literally didn't exercise at all. I... Wow. Um, yeah, I failed this week. No, I didn't no. fail. No, that is not right. I did not meet my goals. You got a badge for for not even a single try. Yay! <laughs> the laziness. Uh, I did go to the beach and play bocce ball, so oh, if that, that counts. counts. Yes, that's like movement. Okay, Moving that's like roundish. Work. Yeah, no, it's walking in the sand. That counts. Okay, good. Um, I did stand in my kitchen for four hours while I was cooking. <laughs> uh, yeah. So last week I didn't bike or walk to work. It just never happened. I had like either stuff I needed to get to right after work that I had to drive to, or I had too much stuff to take to work. And so it was just, <sighs> and I will be a lot more stress free after the concert's over. But what about you? How was your exercise? Hi. I did pretty decent. I got um, a long day of gardening in last um, Tuesday, Mm -hmm. um, even though it was hot because I got there super duper early. Mm -hmm. Um, So I got to get a lot of extra work done before I like fainted from heat exhaustion. So yay! So hopefully I can do that again this Mm -hmm. upcoming week. And then I got extra gardening done in our own garden. I've Mm -hmm. been out there like two, three, no, three times. And we've gotten a lot of good work done out in the garden, so I feel like I've met my exercise goals. Oh, good. Um, I'd still like to be walking more, but it just hasn't happened. Um, it's just, I think I, when I'm by myself, I have very little motivation to go to begin with. And then it's been so hot. Oh, yeah. That what, if I did have motivation, it just... Melted. Out of my ear, yeah. It's so that's it. Pretty much, unless I've got somebody else who's gardening with me or like a gardening commitment, I'm not doing nothing. <laughs> so, still getting good stuff in. Ah, it's Princess Sweetie. Hi, Sweetie Cat. She's waving. Old Lady Cat, what you doing? Uh, so, yeah, that's that's it for me. But I'm hoping to get to yoga on Saturday and, um, Terry found, like, a massage place. Like, it's a massage um, school, so Mm -hmm. it's cheaper right? massages, but still pretty good. So I might go treat myself after my concert's over. That sounds like a good plan to me. Yeah. So you can de-stress. Yes. Um, Random? Yes. Okay. I actually do have something. I do, too. You first. Um, So I'm a big fan of Grumpy Cat. You are. And... I had no idea that Think Geek had Grumpy Cat stuff. So one of my friends linked to um, a drinking glass she has, and it says, like, I didn't choose the grumpy life. The grumpy life chose me or something like that. And I was just like, I have got to get that on a T-shirt because I love Grumpy Cat. It's so my boyfriend has the shirt with Grumpy Cat that says, this is my happy face. 
This is my happy face. And I just, I love Grumpy Cat. She's so adorable. I, I don't even think, I don't even look at her and go, she's so grumpy. I just look at her and go, you are adorable, Grumpy Cat. She's so cute. How could you not love that little grumpy face? Did I ever tell you that I knew a real life Grumpy Cat? No. She was adorable. And like, she had like a grumpy meow too. She would just like, meow. <laughs> <laughs> but she was happy to see you. But that right. was like her face and what came out. Right. <laughs> oh, <Aww>, poor cat. <laughs> we can't all be beauties. Yes, it was adorbs. That sounds pretty cute. So that's my random grumpy okay. cat. I love you. I love you, grumpy cat. <laughs> grumpy cat and the pop pop fish are my spirit animals. Have you seen the pop pop fish book? He's like blub blub. <laughs> It's adorable. Adorbs. Yeah. I'll link to that because if you haven't read The Pop-Pop Fish and you have children, it's a totally cute book. Cool. Or if you like children's books. I don't know. Yep. I just I read a lot of children's books, apparently. Pop-Pop Fish. I love you. Okay, I'm going now. Okay. So, my random is I am in a vegetarian cooking class and... Right. Last week, we made, or two Fridays ago, mm -hmm. we made uh, falafels with fava beans and mm -hmm. uh, a fava bean salad. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to make them again, so I went looking for fava beans, and they are not easy to find. Yeah. But I did know that we have them locally, because that's, like, we only cook with stuff in my cooking class that's local, well so, like, I knew somebody had to have them. And I finally found them at one of the, we have a place that um, has like, it's a, just like a local market. It's kind of like a Trader Joe's, but with a bulk section and local produce. Okay. <laughs> I mean, which is not really like, because Trader Joe's is like a lot of packaged food. So it's, right. yeah, it's kind of like a farmer's market-ish, but with, anyway, I don't really know how to Let describe it, it, obviously. <laughs> it's like its own thing and you just have to... They had fava beans. Okay. And they were fresh fava beans. It's so, so were... hard finding, like, some sometimes, like, specific produce. Like, you know fava beans. Like, they're not that, you know, random. But, like, we were looking for pigeon peas, and they were impossible to find. Well, and the other thing is you have to be looking at the right time. Like, I know that this is the time to look for fava beans. Right. But, um... A lot of people don't know how to cook them uh, or don't want to go through the pain of peeling them because I, uh, fava beans, you have to take them out of the pod and then you have to steam or blanch them for a couple minutes and then peel them again because they're outside. If the fava beans are not fresh mm -hmm. or like if they're not young, mm -hmm. then you have to peel them again. If they're young fava beans, then they're still, you can use the outside part but it was just really fun and I was happy that I found them and that they were a local produce thing and I stumped the checkout girl she's like what are these <laughs> that's adorable uh, so like, fava uh, beans. you saw them you should know and uh, the other checkout girls in the aisles they didn't know either and find like the produce guy heard wind of it and was like it's 26 <laughs> you know, like giving her the number for like that's, it, so. that's so that funny. Was, that just warmed the cockles of my Slytherin heart. Oh uh, yes. So there's a Slytherin somewhere inside me. You just are related to me, <laughs> and I am definitely in Slytherin. So there you go. I'm just covered in Slytherin, uh, covered in Ravenclaw. It's a Slytherin covered in Ravenclaw. Yeah. Pretty so, uh, and then I made my falafels, and they fell apart, and I was like. <gasps> But they're still good. I was very frustrated. I mixed You're in still... some flour, and I was like, you are going to be a patty. <laughs> That's so funny. Well, I... <laughs> and, and they worked, and, you know, oh. the rest of them worked. But my first two, like, all fell apart. And it was still delicious. Like, you just jammed it into a pita and ate it anyway. But Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, even if they fall apart, you can still eat them, and they're still delicious. Yes. There yeah. is. It just doesn't have the crunchy outside part. Whatever. But that's awesome. You got to make falafel, which is super cool. And have I ever mentioned that I love you so much and that you're my favorite person ever? I, in case you don't know, guys, falafel's like 
my number one favorite food. Okay, that's not true. My number one favorite food is rice. But my second number say. two favorite food is falafels. <laughs> no, your second favorite food is Swiss Oatmeal. cheese and soy sauce. <laughs> okay, no. Yeah, I have a lot of weird food combos, but probably oatmeal is my number two. Okay, so, sorry. Rice, and then oatmeal, and then falafel. Okay. okay. This is it's, getting complicated, guys. It's clear now. It's clear now. It's all clear. Clear as mud. Uh, the other thing that I made with the fava beans is uh, another recipe that I got from my cooking class for uh, a fava bean salad. Oh, okay. And it's fava beans, feta cheese, kalamata olives, uh, plum tomatoes. That's okay. the main ingredients. Mm-hmm. It's so good. That does sound good. Oh, yeah. it's delicious. Good thing and the just, boyfriend's going to be home with food soon because you're making me hungry. It's very simple. So. Yes. Um, yeah. Delicious. That does sound totally delicious. We always talk, we end up talking about food. I mean, I know it's because you're doing cooking classes, but I'm like, we talk about food an awful lot for people that are not running a food blog. <laughs> and that are not into food. I'm not really that into food. <laughs> it's so true. It's like food is kind of a chore, but somehow we're always talking about it. So on a non-food related thing, and actually on a crafty thing. Wow. Have you seen the pattern for the um, Care of Magical Creatures charm bracelets? Yes, by Tiny Owl Knits. I linked to them once. So adorable. Oh my god. Yes. I want to make them all. And I don't like small useless things. And I, I know, want right? them all now. <laughs> well, uh, if we, we should go have these in on buying those because I think there's three sets of them now. And they're adorable, and we would both make them, and I think we need to make that happen. It would be so much. We should have, like, a a, a long. We should have a Care of Magical cool. Features charm, but it's a, a long. We should. We totally should. And I that's, like, think... small, so we can yeah. do them easy. We think you should. And I was thinking about making some, because I'm making lace, and I am currently using not really stitch markers for stitch markers. Yeah. Um, I was thinking about making some because I don't like the plastic stick mar- stitch markers. They're okay. but And I don't like ones that are rings. So I was just like, I just need to make some of my own. Right. Like, stop kvetching about what you don't have and make what you want. Yes. So uh, it would be really cute. And because they would be small, they would be light enough that it wouldn't be too weighty in the fabric. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. That's my plan. It's a good plan. I and- had a plan to make um, Fimo stitch markers for ever. So I've never made it happen yet. And Care of Magical Creatures would totally be my favorite class. Yeah. Usually, and I just like to do this, but it was my first owl was Care of Magical Creatures, not because I particularly, like, had something in mind and, like, made it fit the owl. No, I wanted that owl. I just, like, wanted the badge. (laughs) That's pretty adorable. Because I wanted to, like, pass that owl class. (laughs) And, uh, yeah, I would just totally, like, I would love that class. That reminds me, I found out um, when I was going through the um, unofficial Harry Potter Knits magazine Mm -hmm. that we've mentioned before in other podcasts, um, there was an article um, about uh, Tiny Owl Knits, the ones who did, that she made the um, charm bracelets. So um, I'll link to her page and stuff so you guys can see her adorable charm bracelets and so you can covet them as well. And... Really cute. As if it wasn't cute enough. And it's pretty Each cute. pattern comes with, like, a thing that you can do to earn the, the charm. So mm-hmm. you don't obviously have to do this. But then she, like, in the pattern description, she talks about, like, if you do the thing, then each charm, like, represents something. And right. so you can, like, once you're done with the bracelet, it's, like, all these good things that you've done. Right. So it's like, oh, my God, that's awesome. Yep. Badges. <laughs> Yay! Yay! We do love badges. Yes. What won't we do for invisible points and fake badges? Yay! Yay. So, All right. I yes. think that's it. That is it. So I think this will probably be a pretty short episode. Bye! It's not that week. bad. It's not too short. Bye! You can find our show notes at sistersoftheholyfiber.wordpress.com. Yay!
And we're also on Ravelry and YouTube and other places. Bye! Outtakes! Hello and welcome! Hello and welcome. We're just gonna keep trying until we get it today. It's everybody's favorite potions master! Snape sighting. She's I'm like Snape sighting. <laughs> she's like, he's not my favorite potions master. Slughorn is. <laughs> Slughorn is clearly the superior potions master. Even though Snape is like, got a mastery in potion. Yeah. Well, you said that, and then I was thinking Defense Against the Dark Arts because there's a different one every year, and Lupin is obviously, I mean. Uh, favorite. Yeah, he's pretty much probably the best teacher. Except for missing lessons once a month. But what can you do?